Well, the Detroit Tigers will not go 162 and 0. They split on Thursday, one and one with the Mets. Let's talk about it all today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash MLB and use code all lowercase MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Well, the Detroit Tigers finally lose a ball game in their sixth game on the season. They start off 5-0 and with the last remaining undefeated team in baseball before finally dropping a game on Thursday afternoon that they were winning with one out gone in the ninth, no outs. One out. Going into the bottom of the ninth, they were winning as well, but they blow that game and lose two to one. They would split the day going winning rather six to three in game one. And then, like I just said, one to two in game two. So they will come home with a five and one record for the home opener today as you were listening to this. Happy opening day, Detroit, which should be a national holiday, which to a lot of people, honestly, is a national holiday, rightfully so. Uh, The city will be jam-packed. It'll be fun. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some winning happening this weekend as well as the Oakland A's come into town. We'll talk about all of that a little bit more at the end, but we mostly did our preview on yesterday's show Let's talk about these two ball games that were played on Thursday. Obviously, the doubleheader was due to two rainouts on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then a scheduled day off on Thursday. So let's start off with things that went right. Uh, the pitching. It's really, you know, it's funny. We want to break this down into things that went right and things that went wrong. I think we could just do pitching and hitting, and it would accomplish nearly the same thing. Now, there's A couple of people that had some moments at the plate in these games, so we will talk about those for sure. But for the most part, in terms of what went right and what went wrong, it's not much of a surprise. The pitching and the bullpen specifically went very, very right, and the hitting went pretty darn wrong for most of the afternoon, game one included. It was another extra innings, 11-inning affair, affair, and... um. Yeah, now they they it, it's not a new conversation. It's not even a, a new conversation to last year. It's a conversation that we've been having for two years plus now. Um, Andrew Chafin, I thought, was absolutely fantastic. Just the one inning in game one, perfect ball with one strikeout. He looked incredible. You know, the fascinating thing was people kind of pin him as a lefty specialist. Dude was lethal against righties and lefties in this ball game. Sliders low really got righties swinging and missing the entire outing. I thought he looked absolutely fantastic, and I think obviously he gave up the homer in Chicago, but I think he's looked great all year. Shelby Miller, two innings, no hits, no runs, two walks, and four strikeouts. He did not allow a runner, despite in both innings he pitched. Having a run, the Manfred runner on second, right? So with a runner starting off on second base due to the extra inning rule, still put two blanks up there. Absolutely fantastic. Really reared back and got the uh, the fastball working when he needed it most. I feel like in every outing we've seen him so far, the fastball has kind of looked fine when he first throws it. And then once he gets into the super high leverage, I really need a heater right now. It looks fantastic. And I guess we'll take that. Um, But I think that that might be something, hopefully, as the year goes along, that fastball is just sharp right out of the pen. But regardless, however it came about today, looked absolutely fantastic. And uh, even the walks that he allowed, like they were the second one especially, was just like, who even cares? Like that was uh, in that situation, you're not going to press and force yourself 
to challenge somebody if you don't need to. That run doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. If you, you know, go ahead and walk somebody if it means you're going to strike out the next guy. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, he was great. Tyler Holton was great. One inning, one hit, no runs, no walks, and one strikeout. He had a pinpoint command in this one, especially the last two batters that he faced. Uh, I thought the command was absolutely stellar picking up where he left off last season and yeah really the bullpen as a whole I mean Lang had a clean inning a couple of strikeouts did have a walk as well but um you know I, I was throwing uh, was around the strike zone was throwing first pitch strikes especially which is something that we can kind of you know if he's walking one and striking out two or three it's certainly a lot better than what we've been getting out of him the last three months of baseball season. And then Jason Foley, obviously, Mr. Ground Ball, getting a huge double play as well. Uh, Joey Wentz, I thought the fastball looked better than it did last season. Still got into a ton of trouble, though. Command was still really not great. The other stuff really didn't play too terribly well. I don't think he looked too sharp. The pitch that he gave up, uh, the, the RBI on, was not I mean that was kind of a, a just Beatty throwing the wrists out and and getting a ball the opposite way it's a guy that doesn't do well against lefties and that ball wasn't like over the heart of the plate or anything but um you know when your stuff isn't elite then that just kind of happens sometimes so we'll see what happens we'll keep an eye on him Matt Manning certainly was good as well just to put a bow on the bullpen two runs total on the day it was a double header one of them went into the 11th inning and the bullpen as a whole, and they gave up two runs, and those were both Alex Fiedo, unfortunately, in the final inning of baseball played. So really good outing and really good showing from the bullpen, which is something we've seen and been saying all season so far. Matt Manning was great as well. Five and two-thirds of no-hit baseball. He had a no-hitter when he was pulled. No runs, but he had four walks in five and two-thirds and just the three strikeouts pitch count well into the 90s when he got pulled. There was no way he was going to go the distance. Um, he struggled to get swings and misses. Didn't even use the new change-up splitter thing that was featured in spring training for whatever reason. I don't know if it was a strategy thing. I, you know, I don't know if it was a scouting report thing or if they just said, hey, we don't think that's good enough for regular season ball. Don't throw it up here. Use that in AAA. I'm not sure. Those are all speculation. I don't know. But maybe he just didn't have a feel for it. But he didn't throw it. I think he threw one. Literally one. Uh, so it was just... Fastball slider, fastball sweeper, whatever they're going to call it at the end of the day. Command was all over the place early and all over the place at the end, which kind of makes sense. Uh, maybe just anxiety or jitters early. Uh, and then at the end, I mean, like I said, that pitch count got pretty high, unfortunately. But he settled down and, and was pretty solid in the middle. It's just when he settled down, it didn't look different. It, it looked the exact same as last year, Matt Manning which was just throw a bunch of fastballs, get a lot of weak contact flyouts, and and keep hits and runs off the board. Now, it did keep hits and runs off the board, though. So I'm not mad about it. No one's going to be mad at no hit ball, obviously, right? Um, the command, like I said, was, was certainly a little shaky at times, but um, it, it's just, you know, going into the season, it was, oh, is he going to get more swings and misses in spring? It was, oh, look, like he's getting, he's got this new splitter thing and, and he's getting a lot of swings and misses. This looked exactly like 2023 Matt Manning, but 2023 Matt Manning had a sub four ERA and so did 2022 Matt Manning. So th that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not trying to articulate this as a negative. I'm just saying he, he the spring training and what he looks like today were very different products, but it worked just like when it worked, you know, the, uh, last summer when he threw six innings and a combined no hitter. So um, interesting outing as all Matt Manning outings are just, just perpetually interesting uh, as he continues to be, but really good. Obviously again, finds himself in the things that went right side of things. There was a few more things that went right. They did win a ball game, even though there were everyone's probably coming in off the low of, of the offense being as poor as it was there uh, for really both games, but especially in game two, we're going to keep the ball rolling. We'll talk about what else went right. We'll also talk about then what went wrong. And then our favorite segment, which is stuff. Okay, we will get into all of that right after this. I'm going to talk to you all today about our friends over at Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. 
You can choose from weekly menus of 35 options, including popular options like calorie smart, keto, protein plus, vegan, veggie, etc. You name it. They probably have it. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages that help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. You can get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Also, if you're looking for gourmet meals, you can try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccoli, asparagus, you name it. Again, they probably have it. They are no fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. You simply heat and savor the good stuff. So head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 and use code locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on MLB 50, all one word at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while you subs- while your subscription is active. Also got to tell you all about our friends over at Prize Picks. Spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. You don't want to miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond to your prize pick entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, you take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. You can get in on the playoff action in basketball season as well. That start at the end of the month. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take on the game and to a whole new level during basketball's postseason, like I said, at the end of April. So there's a lot of fun stuff, obviously, with baseball back. Uh, it's really Mookie Betts has been an absolute tear, and that's probably the most popular and fun player to look at with these because you can do total bases, right? More or less, you can do fantasy points that he's going to get on a day to day basis. I think as of earlier this week, he was literally leading baseball in pretty much every single offensive statistical category. So, another fun guy to kind of just keep an eye on, and you can get in on all the action and more today. Just download the app and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to. $100. That's locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in as always, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back on Monday. Be sure to check out Locked on Sports today as well. Uh, Subscribe to them on YouTube for free and the Fires TV channel app on Amazon TV as well, Fire TV. So um, let's talk about what else went right in this ball game. I think the defense was pretty solid. Colt Keith had a really, really solid game defensively, which was one of his question marks going into his big league career, right? So good to see him have a solid day at the office in that regard. Gio Urshela. Had a pretty good game with the glove in game one. He didn't play in game two. However, he he had a bad throw to Colt Keith, which Colt Keith saved and had made a really nice athletic play on. So uh, I think that, yeah, all around, there wasn't a ton of opportunities defensively to really flash the leather. But in the few that there was, I think they did pretty well. Jake Rogers looked good behind the plate, as I pretty much always say. I didn't think Carson Kelly looked that great behind the dish in this one, to be honest. And that's something that... You know, last season was one of the reasons why we were like fine with picking up the option and keeping him around. We didn't really expect anything offensively. And then this year, it's kind of been, he's only played in what, two or three games. I don't want to say it's been the opposite, but he's been hitting pretty well. And I thought in in the game that he caught it, it wasn't, you know, a, a really bad passed ball with a man on first base. Uh, and I understand the catcher, you know, he had a knee down trying to get the frame and whatnot. But, and yeah, that's something that just can't happen. So I think that he kind of had a rough game back there, but uh, we'll see how it progresses and how he looks the remainder of the season. Just wanted to point that out for whatever it's worth. Uh, Colt Keith in general, something that went right on this fine day of baseball defensively, we already talked about, but one for five in game one with the big RBI double to left field, obviously then turned around and went two for three with a walk in game two, looked way more comfortable 
from that double on, like significantly, like the most relaxed he's looked in the batter's box since getting called up. Uh, he actually smiled. And I know that that's like a funny thing to point out, but this dude has shown zero emotion for his entire big league career so far. And, you know, he got the big double and it just looked like a weight was lifted off his shoulders. So we'll take that. Riley Green uh, reached base five times total between both games, 0 for 2 with two walks in game two. Had some hits, obviously the big home run in game one. They're going to need to get him going because, I mean, again, we'll talk about something that went wrong in this game, which was very much the offense when both of these games, really, which was the offense. Gio Urshela, there is no power in this dude's swing. Absolutely zero. But good bat to ball skills, puts the ball in play. Three for five in game one with the blooper that scored two runs, kind of put the game on a reach. We'll gladly take it. We'll take bat to ball skills and good defense. Uh, I, I have no issue with that profile for, you know, a short term kind of option at third base. It's just, I mean, you can tell there is, there is no pop in, in that bat. But again, not something that went right. Not, not mad about it. Um, burning through the Mets bullpen in game one was something that went really well. They worked a lot of counts. They went through seven relievers plus a starter just in game one. They set themselves up so nicely in game two, and then scored one run. They they were drawing walks a, a decent amount. It wasn't the most ridiculous thing in the world, but they, they were drawing some walks. Didn't matter. We're getting runners on base, couldn't bring them home the entire afternoon, except for extra innings. They are the greatest extra innings baseball team, I think, in the history of the world. That That's really the, <laughs> the biggest thing. They turn into, you know, the, the 1920s Yankees. They, they turn into the the... Uh, pick pick an offense, <laughs> turn into, well, you could pick a few different areas of Yankees ball, to be honest, um, but they turn into a, a much different lineup for whatever reason in extra innings. But um, let's talk about what went wrong. The offense. This is really the main bulk of the conversation of what went wrong uh, because it's everybody. It's not just one or two players. Obviously, Torkelson on the season has a 399 OPS. That is abysmal to start off the year. Riley Green hit well today, but is still batting under a buck 50 on the season. The team went four for 18 with runners in scoring position on the day and left 16 runners on base between both games. I mean, like at the end of the day, you just, you can't let Adrian Hauser, Jose Buto and Reed Garrett just absolutely dice you. Reed Garrett had an eight ERA for the Tigers in what 2019 was that was he was our he was a rule five pick one of those Avila years. Like there, there's just there's no there's no reason there's it's frustrating because this is another season and look they're five and one. I'm not trying to hit the panic button and say that. You know the sky is falling. Okay, they're they're five and one. They were two outs away from being six and zero oh headed into the the opening weekend. We'll gladly take it. We're celebrating it. We're all happy. Okay, no one's upset. But this offense has looked dreadful to start off the season. Let's just play the OPS game. We used to do that. Remember in 2022, if you're a longtime listener, we used to play. Actually, we probably did it last year too. Plenty. We used to just look at you know. Let's look at the OPSs in a lineup. So this is game two. Okay. I'm not even going to say names. We're just going to go strictly numbers. 463, 399, 886, 737, 861, 554, 550, 411, and 385. That is horrific. That is that is abysmal. That's catastrophic. Pick another crazy adjective. It, that's really, really bad. You have Kerry Carpenter, who went 0 for 4, but as an 886... Oh, and, we're talking about a seven game sample size. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to say that, you know, Jake Rogers and, and, and well, I almost said Javi, that one might actually be true. Jake Rogers, Parker Meadows, Spencer Torkelson are not going to have OPSs in the threes and four hundreds throughout a full season. Okay. It's not going to happen. But in terms of the, the offensive production you have got early on, it, it is not giving anyone optimism. And that leads us to my, my final point here, which we will get to right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? 
Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% Match. This offer is only good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscriptions subscription fees apply. And now time for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked on Tiger. So talking about what went wrong, obviously the offense is the elephant in the room here. So it's not going to be from an offensive production standpoint. It's not going to be, you know, six out of your nine hitters with an OPS under 600 bad. Okay, that that is not going to happen. That being said, because they've gotten off to such a bad start, the question is, what is this offense, though? Right? And, and again, they're they're not injecting optimism into anybody. So it's it's just like mathematically. I, I'm not being an apologist. I'm not trying to tell you this offense is going to be really good. It, it might be the worst in baseball. It might be the best in baseball. We're seven games in, okay? I, I'm not trying to tell you one way or another. I, I'm just saying uh, it's not... Again, it's, we're, we're not going to be here in June with six guys with OPSs in the fours and 300s. That being said, it is a matter of how bad actually is it, though? How much better actually is it? We came into this season, and we've talked about it since spring training. We've been talking about it here since January, February. They have set themselves up to have a season with a billion question marks. Most of them on offense, a a majority of them on offense, not all of them. There's some in the bullpen and some in the rotation, right? But most of them are offensively. Like so far, again, we're seven games in. Kelly had a couple of good games. Mark Hanna had a couple of good games. Green and Keith were good on Thursday. But like there isn't a single person you point to and be like, wow, like that, that dude has been really good the entire, you know, first week of the season so far. And we've talked so much about how this offense is going to be very heavily reliant on Green and Torkelson taking massive steps forward. Obviously, so far this year, they have not done that. Torkelson especially, he is late on everything, dog. Like, just what he is late on everything right now. A big-time adjustment needs to be made um, because it, it is... <laughs> It, it doesn't matter what pitch it is. He he seems to be late on anything thrown to him, especially fastballs. And that just is something that dates back to really his entire major league career. So that needs to change, obviously, right? He's not going to have a 399 OPS this season, okay? But like <laughs> he, he, a, a big time adjustment needs to be made in that department, clearly. But even outside of those two, they're not getting production really anywhere. I just mentioned a couple of guys that have had some decent games, but they're they're really not. They're not getting a ton of production really from anybody until it gets into extra innings. And then they become the greatest baseball team to ever live. So, uh, again, it it, it can't be this bad. And I know there are people be like, oh, it might be. And, you know, be for laughs or whatever. Uh, Sure. (laughs) It's not going to be four and 300 OPS bad, but there is legitimate concern, legitimate, very legitimate concern about how good it actually will end up being. The pitching cannot bail you out forever. You can't demand zero in one run ball from your bullpen 
on a night to night basis. That is not feasible. That's not reasonable. Reasonable. That's not possible over the course of 162. Your rotation, while good and while a lot of people are optimistic about, is not please get under two runs against so that we can have a chance to win any given night. The offense desperately needs to step up. That all being said, we're seven games in. Okay. We're going to give this a chance to breathe. Last season, they got off to a horrible start in April and they started hitting as the year went along. They've really done that forever. The fact that we are five and one despite this is two thumbs up. That's awesome. Good job to the pitching staff. But you're not going to do this. You're not going to win baseball games this way that you've won in the first week over the course of 162. It's not possible. So we need to find some offense. Okay. Uh, other things that went poorly, the Angel Hernandez call. <laughs> the worst thing I've ever seen. I <laughs> And I feel like you could say that about uh, quite a few Angel Hernandez calls, not to, you know, just uh, bully somebody for no reason here. But, uh, you know, it, the funny thing is, is I actually thought his strike zone was really good. Like I, the whole game, I was like, man, that's Angel back there. Like his zone is solid. This is a good strike zone. Mad respect, man. Props. And then he just had to do an Angel Hernandez thing. And, and he had to do that. And that is one of the most absurd calls I've ever seen in my life. Genuinely. And, and no one's surprised that who made the call. A swing. For sure, dude. For sure. Let's end with um, some stuff, okay? Casey Mize, first outing back. I don't think he really fell necessarily fully into something that went right or something that went wrong, but it is obviously very, very noteworthy. Went four and a third, five hits, three earned runs, two walks, and four strikeouts. I thought the stuff was really solid. Uh, the fastball was great, especially early on. The splitter was probably the best we've ever seen. From him at the major league level, uh, the movement on it was crazy. Really good vertical drop. Uh, good velo as well. All around, the location was good. He got a couple of really nasty swings and misses on it. On two strike counts as well. A lot of confidence in it. Good, good, good across the board. Um, he was really trying to get people to swing out of the strike zone on the slider all game. And just nobody bit. Like, nobody. Like, go, go watch that back. He consistently, especially early, kind of went away from it because he realized it wasn't working, but especially early, just consistently was throwing sliders low and into lefties and low and away to righties and was trying to get people to chase, chase, chase and one and two strike counts and not a soul bit on it. So um, the fastball was good. The splitter was was good, right? The, but long-term, I think he's really going to need that pitch, that that breaking pitch, uh, that breaking offering rather uh, to, to be a, a lot more effective. But this is his first start in two years. And I think that the stuff looked really good. I'm optimistic, honestly, after this. Even the one inning that that he gave up runs in, man, like it was he had two outs, nobody on, and just hit by pitch, dribbler by Pete Alonso on a ball way out of the strike zone the other way, and then a hanging splitter. And next thing you know, it's it's a whole new ball game. So um, yeah, I you know, for again, for a first start in two years, very happy to see him out there. That's gotta be a great feeling. Um, yeah, mad, mad, mad respect. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it's something that he can build off of because I think that it probably is. Um, uh, other stuff, you know, Javi uh, is obviously Javi at the plate, the second worst qualified hitter in all of baseball last year, but had the only RBI in game two. This isn't me celebrating that. He, he still has been dreadful at the plate this season. Um, this is not a like it would be in things that were good if I thought it was worth celebrating. It's just wild to me that he had a he had a three what was it, 312 batting average with runners in scoring position last year and an 829 OPS with RISP last season. That's wild. No impossible that is. To be the second worst hitter in the entire game of baseball, Only I think he was only ahead of Tim Anderson. Um, I guess it also depends on what stat you use. It's just so wild. Like he, he was a good hitter when a runner was on second and or third. And he was so bad when they weren't that he it, – it's – he's so weird. Just a wild player. 
And it, no, it doesn't make up for it. I'm not being an apologist. Okay, everybody calm down. It's just, it's so wild to me that that's a real stat. How is that possible? <laughs> How is it possible to be so much of a different hitter with a runner in scoring position than not? I joked. I said, anytime somebody's on first with Javi up, they should just steal first pitch and we should just try to get a runner in scoring position for him. Makes no sense to me. Very frustrating, to be honest with you. Brandon Nemo, Nemo rather, in this game, my goodness, Brandon Nimmo, I feel like he walked 60 times in two games. Swing the bat for the love of everything. It was really frustrating. Uh, the Pete Alonzo homer was on his shoelaces. I have no idea how he was able to hit that ball out. Again, the only thing separating us between a 6-0 and start and a 5-1 and start. Um, but yeah, man, I, I mean, that was an impressive <laughs> feat. He, he has grown man strength. He's one of the best home run hitters in this game for a reason. That was very impressive. I really liked what Fiedo's changeup honestly looked like in this game. I think that it's it's way better than his old changeup, um, but you need run support. And again, you can't expect just perfect baseball from your bullpen night in and night out. That's ridiculous and not sustainable. Um, the, the fan interview, Max, was that his name? With the green coat? Maybe the highlight of the entire afternoon. That dude should be hosting a talk show somewhere um, absolute wonderful human being, hilarious interview. It seems like a really, really chill, down to earth, great dude. Wishing Max wherever he is out in Queens nothing but the best. Um, last before we get you out of here, Miguel Diaz claimed off waivers by the Astros. My my absolute worst case scenario. Uh, it's heartbreaking. I'm not taking questions at this time. My, my sweet prince. Has, uh, has left the organization, wishing him nothing but the best. I'm sure he will get some sort of opportunity again, uh, and I, I hope he takes in runs, man. I, I will forever be a fan of that man, and uh, yeah, sad that he is no longer a part of the Tigers organization. Also, Matt Manning sent back down to AAA after the ball game. I know he had a no-hitter. I know that's really easy to point to and be like, hey, he had a no-hitter. Like, he did pretty darn well. He did do pretty darn well. Just needs to work on the command stuff. And again, didn't even offer his, like, change-up thing. So I'm, I'm sure that he's still working on some stuff. One outing, uh, even if he threw a perfect game, I don't think that, well, I, maybe. But I don't even think if he did, like, had the greatest start ever that they were going to really, you know, let one start just change their mind on uh, who what the, what the rotation was going to look like when we've only gone through it one time. So it's still early. Uh, we did our preview on this weekend yesterday. So if you're looking for an A's preview, we kind of broke down the pitching matchups, what to expect, et cetera. Um, win the series for the love of everything. Just win this series. There is no reason you should be losing a series to the Oakland Athletics. Please don't. Please don't. I, I, I don't want to deal with that. I, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to show up Monday and have all of us be, you know, groggy and, and upset. Please don't do that. You're the better team. Get the offense going too. Let's let's put some runs on the board against one of the worst teams any of us have ever seen. The the Oakland Sacramento Athletics of Las Vegas. Okay, please beat them. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, absurd. Um. Yeah, have fun. Happy opening day. Happy happy home opening day, obviously. Have fun. Ain't no party like a Detroit party. The city is going to be rocking. It's going to be a great time. Um, may see some of y'all around. Hope everyone has a fantastic time. Stay safe, Detroit. Let's win some ball games. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in. Every day we will be back on Monday, hopefully recapping a series win over the Oakland Athletics, and some offense that actually does something. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch y'all then, baby. Go Tigers.